Welcome to South Central Regional Library's Safe Inside Your Walls programming, supported by Safe at Home Manitoba. Hello, my name is Linda Machillis. I'm a fibre artist and welcome to Inside My Studio. Today I would like to introduce you to an overview of how I create an art quilt. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of a look inside my studio and then I'm going to move over to some PowerPoints because the process that I use is um, takes a period of time and I wouldn't be able to show you all of those steps without going back to more of a historical record of the steps that I take. When I talk about uh, fiber art picture, there are lots of options of what that can be. It can be a very abstract piece or it can be something that is as true to a photograph as possible. Today I'm going to talk about that aspect. So the piece I'm going to work with is um, uh, a piece where um, I've done a garden shot of columbines and I did the work in this in uh, the spring of 2020 when we were on lockdown. So you can see behind me what I'm going to be talking about um, is the columbine picture. So up on the uh, extreme end there we have an actual photograph of columbines. I'll go into the features of that in a few minutes. And then there are a number of steps to almost create your own pattern and they really revolve around creating a, a sketch. And so you see versions of the sketch, small and then a larger version. And uh, then I use that to create my pattern and create the finished piece, which is in the center. It's sitting about uh, 20 inches tall by 16 wide to give you a rough idea. You're inside my uh, inside studio, which is a basement studio, so I work with um, artificial light. And um, But it's a, a lovely cozy space that's my own that I can come down to and I can work on a piece and leave it for a period of time and keep coming back and forth. I'll be showing you a little bit more about my studio and uh, things, for example, as my stash of, of fabric up on the top here. We have all of the, the fabric that is purchased and work a lot with batiks, but I'm also working with uh, the aspect of dyeing my own. And, and again, I'll show you more of that. When I work with fiber, there are a lot of different options. So it can be as simple as working with some really remarkable, lovely wools, as you can see here with different plies. And then I'll be working with something perhaps that I'm crocheting or knitting. And in fact, I'm working with sweaters. So I do like that aspect of working with fiber. I also love to work with uh, colorful and lovely textured um, threads. So I have quite a collection and some of these date back to the 1920s. Some of these different options that I use when I work on the surfaces of things and when I do what's called embellishment. So I have quite a collection of that. I also work a lot with um, taking those same sort of fibers and putting them on the surface of my quilts. So to give you an example, this is a quilt um, the seashore in Tasmania actually and um, the work itself all of these fabrics are actually hand dyed by myself and then with natural fibers so or natural dyes so uh, I might purchase a natural dye uh, or I such as matter root or I might grow it uh, or pick it in terms of a plant like um, Dyer's Coreopsis and then I will dye the fabric generally in the summertime um, and I'll use those fabrics. But the surface itself to get texture and depth, I'm using other fibers. So I'm using fiber, which this is uh, wool and I'm couching it is the term when I'm adhering it to the surface. And then uh, in addition to the couching and things like that, I'll often work with a variety of beads. Uh, or other embellishments, found objects. One of my favorite places to go to is to go to the thrift store and get jewelry and take it apart and find different aspects I can. Or I might even be making pieces such as these clay buttons. So those are all aspects that I will adhere to the surface to add depth and interest to my fiber art pieces. Over the years I've done a lot of study, uh, uh, working with a lot of individuals, working workshops to learn a lot more about techniques, uh, working with color, working with different embellishments such as I've shown you. And so what I'm going to put together for you is are some of my steps. And they're really an adaptation of a number of different um, techniques. Uh, many people would follow the same steps, others would add in a lot of different steps. I will work with a lot of uh, specialized equipment such as on the um, 
right here you see what's called a light board. In a light board, I can change the amount of light coming through and this is a really handy surface when I'm doing tracing particularly for individual pieces in the flower. Uh, now, Usually, before I had the light board, I would have worked against a window outside and get that light coming in from outside. So there are ways to do everything that I'm going to show you uh, very naturally, or if you do this full time as I do, then you may be investing in some different equipment. And uh, I'll show you some of that as well. So welcome to Inside My Studio. Welcome to the opportunity to walk through what happens when you move from a photograph to a fiber art quilt. And I hope you enjoy what you see. As mentioned before, I really enjoy working with fiber. And in particular, I like working on fiber art quilts. You see an example of part of one on the right in the green, where you're looking at a prairie field. What you will notice there are a number of different types of woven fibers, which are purchased and also hand dyed, and then also machine quilting and embroidery on top. I have moved into the world of dyeing my own fabric and using that along with commercially dyed fabric. So on the left you will see choke cherry being used to dye cloth. And then I will also do my own printing for different surface designs. So the three chairs represent mono printing. And then above that where you see the impression of plants, that's eco printing. They're all aspects of working with fiber. Inside my studio uh, you will see that I have a number of um, tools that I use. Not all of these are necessary at all, but they do make my life a lot easier when I work with fiber almost on a daily basis. So moving from the left to right, you'll see I have a pressing station where I press on a, a wool felt pad. I have a regular sewing machine and a serger. Above that I have a wall where I will put pieces that I'm working on. In the center at the back corner are all of my fabrics, or many of them, which I've sorted by color. These will be commercial fabrics. Below them will be a stack of fabrics that I've dyed myself using natural dyes. I have a whole collection of fibers and embellishments and beads, buttons, and so on in the cabinets. You always need a really large table to work from, which you see in the center, and then one of my real perks that I enjoy is I have purchased a mid-arm quilter which is in the foreground. On the right hand side you'll see the other side of that studio where there's a design wall. This is a lovely addition which you can have adhered to the wall or freestanding. It's really just a large piece of particle board which has been covered with um, some sort of a felt covering which allows pieces to stick to it and is really great when you're working and designing over a period of time. In the foreground you'll see some of the traditional and art quilts that I've been working on. The focus today is on how to create a fiber art quilt. So working from a photograph to a quilt. Sometimes these are very realistic interpretations as you'll see in this case a picture of a ruin in Tasmania which has been created to a postcard sized fiber art quilt. And in that detail, notice the detail of the brickwork, of the grasses, the selection of colors of fabric are all part of the process. But often fiber art can also be very abstract or a combination of the above. The process that you go through to create a fiber art quilt uh, can vary. Uh, this is my adaptation. Many people will choose a similar approach, but they may add or delete certain steps. I start with the photograph, I work in design, then I compose the top part of the quilt in cloth. Uh, when I have sandwiched the quilt, I will do the quilting process and do a lot of thread painting, finish it off after I've embellished it. Start with your photograph. Although you can get wonderful ideas off the internet and by going to shows and seeing others work, and please do get those ideas. Please choose to work with original work. You need to give credit to those who have done their own creative process. So although I have worked with others creative work, I've always spoken to them about it and got their permission to do so. It's ended up 
with wonderful conversations with artists about their work, but it could have gone the other way. They could have not liked my interpretation or given me permission to uh, show such work. So start with original photos if you can. Then you have to choose the right photo. The photo itself should have big blocks of colour. You learn that early on when you're doing landscape quilts and you look for the horizon blocks of colour. In this case, notice the columbines, which we're going to be following through, have large swaths of white and pink and different shades of, of pink, or I should say probably different values that we're working with. Um, you'll see the green hues and then you'll see the grey. All of these contribute to a strong visual image. I also like in this photograph that there is a play on light with the bright light in the corner at the bottom and then the shadow. All of that contributes to a strong photograph to work with. Overall though, remember to work with a photograph that you really like because you're going to be spending a lot of time working on it. What you need to take your photograph and create a sketch. You could simply enlarge your photograph and trace a sketch. I tend to work with the photograph a bit first to um, make those edges very distinct, to choose how many individual colors I want to work with. So I work in Photoshop Elements and do a process called posterizing, which gives me that effect. Then I will take that posterized piece and I will go, digital image, and I will go and print it. When you do large photos, though, it can get quite expensive to print, so I've invested in a projector. I'll project up against the wall on top of a blank sheet of paper and I'll do my tracing. Then I'll look carefully at the, the different uh, types of cloth that I have to work with. I'm looking at hue, I'm looking at value and intensity, and I'm deciding which pieces I'll use, and it helps if I color in my sketch as a bit of a legend. From that sketch, I will create a transparent overlay. Notice in the center, it's uh, at the bottom, it's a clear piece of plastic that lays over top of the sketch and shows the outline. This will help with placement of pieces later on. I will also use the sketch to cut out individual pieces of each flower or each element that could be used with fusibles later on or with freezer paper to then adhere to cloth and figure out what I'm cutting out. In the background is a muslin underlay. This is the first part of your top and you can see the cream outline on this picture. I will cut on individual pieces and I will adhere them to the, the muslin, but very loosely at first because I tend to move pieces around a lot. I have to decide then if I'm working in raw edge or turned under applique. If it's turned under applique, I'll use freezer paper to cut out pieces and I will cut a slightly larger piece than I need in cloth so I can turn it under. If I'm working raw edge as this piece, I'll cut it out in a, a fusible like Steam Seam 2 light and then I will um, be adhering it to the background. Um, when I'm doing this you can see just a bit of the transparent outlay on the top that overlay is going to come down and help me in the placement of pieces. Composing cloth is really building from the back to the front or from the uh, real background to the foreground. So I'll often number pieces to help me figure out which ones to place first. And that's where a design wall comes in very handy because I can keep moving pieces around and working on them over a period of time. When everything's in place, I will iron and in essence fuse everything down. And then I need to stitch the top with just stitching around the outlines to hold all of the pieces together using a transparent um, thread of some sort. At this point I can add more interest before I do any more stitching. I tend to use paints or ink tents pencils. Ink tents work like a pencil crayon. I do some shading and then I go over it with a paintbrush and water and that creates all of a sudden a very vivid intense color hence the name Inktense Pencils. I use, in this case, I use them for the grays and darker colors in the center of the flower to create more depth. Once the top has been built, the next step is to do the actual quilt process. It's like a traditional quilt. You have a top, you have a middle batting layer, and then you have your under layer. Three layers, so hence sandwiching the quilt. I will stretch out that under layer. I use adhesive to 
attach the batting and adhesive to attach the top and then pin it to hold everything in place. Now I want to remove pins as I go and use thread in place to pull all the three layers together. I'm going to do free motion quilting. I can work with a regular machine and do decorative stitches, do straight lines. I can even free motion quilt with a regular machine. And it's very possible my splurge is to have a mid-arm quilter which allows more freedom of movement. And when I'm working, I am moving the cloth underneath the machine. Usually I'm working in short strokes that mimic paint strokes and that's where the term thread painting comes from. When I have done a very thorough job, the whole surface will be heavily worked through with thread and very stiff. One of the aspects I find the most enjoyable is to add a lot more interest now and I can add beads or fibers, uh, fibers to create such as strips of grass or I can use found objects um, which might be pieces of jewelry, I can embroider, I can do more painting. In this picture you can see where the thread painting has created the stitching that shows the roundness of the petal, gives some shape to the petal and then some depth to the center and where the beads have created the interest and, and mimic the stamens on the flower. Once all of that is done I have to complete the edge. So in a traditional quilt you would do a border which is very possible or I tend to um, and uh, to stitch on cloth and then turn the edges to create a facing. So you don't really see a fixed border in that case. I will also add a label in, on the back. And okay, this has been called Garden Delights 2020. If I'm wanting to show it, I will be careful first of all to look at the show guidelines to make sure that my sizing is correct, that I have added some sort of a band to help with hanging in the using the directions that they're giving me. What do I do with the quilt other than hang it then? Well, I can show it uh, and, and I do enjoy entering in shows, but I like to also show it to a larger audience. So I will post and I will post on Instagram at Matchup Fiber Art. This is like my electronic journal. Once a week I post and I talk about the pieces I'm working on and the techniques that I'm using. It keeps me true to my art, keeps me reflecting on what I'm doing and keeps me uh, working away on various techniques on a very regular basis. So how do you get started in this work? Well, in my case, my path started with a love of sewing. I started sewing in home ec, sewing clothing of course, which was very traditional and then sewing things from around the home. When I decided to start working quilting, I went to traditional techniques and I took a, a course at a community college on traditional paper piecing. Then I started working regularly with other quilters and with a variety of mentors. And traditional quilting would have been Yvette in more of the paper, sorry, in the fiber arts would have been Rosalind. And these individuals really pushed my thinking in terms of what quilting looked like and what the techniques could be. I was working full time and so it was hard to find time to work on my art. Working with other quilters pushes you to keep working on your technique to practice and to work with feedback. Since then I've taken a lot of classes, a lot of workshops in person and then since COVID we do a lot of the workshops online. I've entered art shows and uh, some of those are juried where you get feedback on your work. And then I've also begun working with a variety of arts associations, which puts me in touch with other fiber artists with all sorts of cutting edge techniques and helps me in my learning and sharing. Overall, it comes down to practice, practice, practice. I hope you've enjoyed this inside my studio look at how you might move from a photograph to a fiber art quilt, and I hope you find as much enjoyment in the process as I do. I want to thank the South Central Regional Library staff, in particular Angela Lovell at the Manitou branch, for the opportunity to share inside my studio today. Thank you for joining us for this Safe at Home Manitoba production. Stay safe inside your walls.